The next step in fabrication of bite blocks is to block out the visible undercuts. And just as we mentioned before, you want to block out just enough. If you create excessive block out here, it will create uh, a very loose fit of the base plate up against the tissue, maxilla or the mandible, and it makes it very difficult to achieve proper relations with your client or maxillary mandibular relations. So we're gonna take a little bit of wax here. If you have a hard time seeing it, you can outline just by kind of holding your pencil at an angle. Most of the undercuts, or at least visible undercuts, they're around the, va the labial vestibule here. So between the outer edge of the ridge and down here somewhere. So we can block that out. Sometimes you might have areas where you had something, maybe a recent extraction, like this area here. You can block that out very gently as well. Any fine fissures inside the palate or around the rugae, we're gonna block those out, although very minimally, not a lot, just very little. Okay, what other areas we can identify here that we need to identify? right now, just for the fabrication of the base plate. Well, certainly, this buccal frenum. Also, this labial frenum. And as well as the other side. So we wanna make sure when we fabricate our base plate that we don't overextend it over those frenums because it will have an effect how the bite blocks fit in the patient's mouth. So I'm gonna start by applying some base plate wax. You can certainly use block out wax, but I think for the most part, base plate wax works very good. And these models are fairly dry. It makes it more challenging to apply block out wax, whether you're using actual block out wax or base plate wax, to models that are, that are damp or moist. So I'm gonna go back now with the other side of my number seven spatula, and I wanna make sure that I gently scrape away because I don't wanna alter the surface of this model. This is my master model. Any alterations to this model will alter the fit of the final prosthesis. And for that reason, the tip of my spatula is fairly dull. It doesn't have a needle point to it. So I don't wanna be scraping my model as my tip approaches the surface of the cast. So at some point, if you're using a, number, a new number seven spatula, you might wanna round off the tip a little bit, unless you're using that number seven for carving wax with your wax ups. So generally speaking, I have two of them. I have one number seven for general use, and I have one with a fine point that I use for wax ups. It's a little bit different. So I'm gonna to continue to the other side. And notice I'm holding the model in such way that I have control of my wax. So the wax only flows in the areas where I want to block out and nothing more than that. While the wax is still warm, I can quickly turn it around. I know the tip of my number seven spatula is fairly dull. I'm doing very little or actually no damage to the model, but I'm just blocking out the undercuts. So if you have trouble seeing where you need to block out, you can certainly outline it with a little bit of pencil, and I think things become a little more evident where you need to flow wax. A Little bit over the rugae area here. And again, the more heat that I apply to my wax, the more flow I'm gonna to have to my wax so I can keep this 
block out fairly thin. A little bit over the inside of a pillow. There's an area back here, a little fissure here that I never marked, but I can certainly go back and, and fill that in. I don't think I have anything around the tuberosity. Sometimes you have undercuts around tuberosity, sometimes you don't. Use your judgment in terms of where you need to block out or not. So I think that's about it for the upper cast. I'm going to bring the lower one over and we're going to identify and go through the same process. So let's identify our undercuts or at least maybe start off, start off with our buckle freenums. There's one on either side. These are a little more slanted towards the posterior, so you have to keep that in mind when fabricating the base plate. And there is no recognizable lingual frenum here, so we're going to leave that alone. Sometimes they're not there. But I definitely see an undercut at the retromylohyoid area, right here. Definitely there's an undercut there that I need to block out. And on this particular case, it's not too bad. Other ones are a lot more severe. Uh, maybe a little fissure here. Possibly some undercut here. So for good measure, I'll block that out as well. And some over here as well. Very little. And if you have any fine fissures like this over any part of the ridge, you want to block those out as well. Here and here. Okay. So again with my number seven spatula. So control the consistency and the flow of your wax. keep things fairly tidy so you don't have to go back and correct it too many times. I'm going to go here and apply some at this labial undercut right here. Keep in mind, the more wax you add to relieve these undercuts, the more unstable your base plates become. And as we talked about it earlier, you might want to be thinking about processed, baits, uh, processed base plates if you have severe undercuts that requires you to block out so much that you know it's going to make your bite blocks very unstable. All right, I'm going to go in here now and block out this severe undercut, although I've seen it worse, of the retromylohyoid. And I'm just going to go back and clean that up a little bit while the wax is still soft. If I let that wax cool off, I can certainly go back and warm it up a little bit with my alcohol torch. And then carve it back some more. So I'll finish off the other side.
This one is a little more severe than the left side, so I'm going to use a little more wax and turn my instrument over and carve off a little bit of the excess. Obviously, if you over apply the wax, you're going to have to carve out more than that. But I think that should do it. And just as a final measure, take your alcohol torch. and just flame over the wax a little bit just to smooth it out so you don't have an uneven surface on the back of your base plates. So a little more here. And I'll go back to the maxillary cast and I'll do the same thing there. You can certainly do this at any time. You don't have to do it all the way in the end. So there we have the maxillary and mandibular casts, master casts, blocked out, ready to adapt our light cure base plate. But before we do that, we need to apply the separator. So make sure that your separator is at the right consistency. And apply a fine layer over the whole tissue bearing surface of the cast, which is anything outside, anything inside the land area. So the edge to the inner edge of the land area, and I like to go a little bit past it. Because as you'll see when we start adapting the material, you're definitely going to press past that edge. So with a little bit of uh, air nozzle, you want to spray off any excess residue of the separator. So make sure you have a fine even coat and it's dry to the touch before we start adapting our light cure. I'll do the same thing on the lower. Obviously, I'm not going to be adapting material here, but I know it's going to contact there, so I want to make sure that it's fairly separated to be able to peel it off with very little or no resistance and make sure we we'll go all the way through and all the way around. So I'm just gonna air spray that. And I do that to ensure that the excess layer of separator or any extra, extra separator that might be on there is blown away because if we let it rest, eventually separator will dry and will take up space. So we want a fine film over both models. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to adapt our base plates accurately on the model. Therefore, they won't fit properly in the patient's mouth. 